take five minutes um, on what this, um, uh, to set the ball rolling. And uh, my talk is going to be on, um, first slide. Is that safe? Uh, it's going to be on the intersection of the Biodiversity Act, vis-a-vis -vis patents and plant variety protection, because I think we have uh, Neeti, Abhay, and Shashank who can talk on more details. Uh, from the European perspective, we have Oliver and Bart, who's going to talk about um, the um, European perspective on plant variety protection and so on, especially the broccoli case and Bart on the seaweed case. So just to uh, give a little glimpse, um, my scope of my talk is going to be what can be protected under the PVP and patent regimes in the plant and agri sector. Very short, because then I go into the Biodiversity Act and what are approvals needed under the patent regime. Are approvals required for plant variety protection under the biodiversity regime? This is very, very India specific. And um, so just to give a glimpse about what we want to cover in this. We all know that you start with a gene of interest. It can be a modified gene of interest, and then you have a promoter, you make it into a vector construct. You can have a promoter, you can have a transit peptide, you take this, and then you insert this gene of interest either through a vector construct or through uh, different means and you then produce a plant which is a genetically modified plant. So as seen, can I have the pointer? It's not working? Slide is not working. Slide is the mark. Uh, where is it? Okay. Okay, it doesn't matter. So what really happens is, um, the gene construct, the vector construct, the vector are all patentable under, um, under the patent regime. Uh, the method of producing a plant which is genetically modified is also patentable. The last part which I show you as a plant, which is actually the plant, will get protected under the PVP Act. So the first part gets under the uh, Patent Act. And uh, so I think Neeti will talk about it in more detail. So I don't want to take that, but I just want to give a glimpse on what is patentable in India under the plant regime and what is not. And so under the plant, but just to give you a perspective, what was going to talk about my next slides on the Biodiversity Act. Um, so under 3J, plants and animals in whole or part thereof is not patentable. Essentially biological processes for production of plants or preoccupation of plants and animals is not patentable. So plants, animals, and India at present, even cells are not patentable, which is eukaryotic cell, which becomes a big problem because you can have cell lines, but they say it falls under a part of a plant or plant of an animal or part of an animal. So anything which is breeding, which can be a selfing, which can be a selfing, crossing, are also not patentable because they fall under essentially biological processes, just as similar to what you have in Europe. But the line is very, very thin, not for people who are in this area, but for somebody outside. You really need to make a distinction between essentially biological processes and those which are not. Uh, just to give you a perspective, so if you start with it, you isolate the gene of interest that's patentable, uh, you synthesize a cDNA modified that is synthesized, that is patentable. Making a construct is patentable. Method of transforming a plant to make a transgenic plant is patentable. You can select a transgenic plant with a specific location. All these are patentable under the patent regime. But when you make the transgenic varieties, you get protection under uh, PPVFRA in India. Um, but now I shift into Biodiversity Act and IP. So there are different forms that you need to get approval. So if you have anything under the, um, under the patent regime, then you need to get approval under the, uh, under the NBA with Form 3. 
but those are only for those where you use Indian bioresources because you are doing research on Indian bioresources and you have come out with a patented uh, material from the bioresources, you need to get approval. So if you take plant extracts, genes from plants, promoters from plants, if they're using Indian plant material, you need to get prior approval from the biodiversity. Uh, what are approvals under Form 1? So if you, you, this Form 3 approval is only for the patent regime. It does not come for PVP regime at all. Approvals under Form 1 is required for access of bioresources from India, but that is only for foreign individuals and foreign companies. So even if there is a 1% shareholding, that becomes a foreign company. So you need Form, um, form 1 approvals for access of Indian bioresource material. It gets a little complicated. So I said for a plant gene or promoter, if it is a patent, you need approval from the NBA. If you go for a plant variety, either through GM method or through regular breeding method and you have a PVP protection, you do not have to go to NBA for uh, approval or prior approval, so for patent. But however, if you are a foreign company and you use plant material to come up with new varieties, you need to get Form 1 approval. So I don't want to go too much into that because that's not what we are talking about. So sometimes if you're a foreign company, access may not be free. You need to get NBA approval from that. That is prior approval. If you're in an Indian company, <clears throat> you need prior intimation. That's the difference. Prior approval versus prior intimation. <clears throat> you can do any activity such as research, biosurvey, biotilization, and commercial utilization. You don't have to go for the specific activity to NBA. You only go for access. There's no regulation for activity. The regulation is only there in access. But for the transactions, if you do a patent on an Indian biomaterial, if you're an Indian company, prior intimation, foreign company, prior approval, and you go for IPR, that is a patent, you need to get further approval from NBA under Form 3. If you go for PVP, you do not need prior approval from NBA for PVP, but if you use plant material and you're a foreign company, you need to go and get Form 1 approval for access for doing research. So there's a very, very difficult line, and to tread over it is very difficult. Um, that is why Section 3, you need to get approval if you're a foreign company or even one shareholding. In one company, I know the director, an independent director, is a US citizen, and the whole company now becomes a foreign company under the eyes of the Biological Diversity Act. Generally, under the Companies Act, you need to have 51% holding to be considered as a foreign company, but here, even one share holding in the capital becomes a foreign company. If you have a director who's a foreigner, you then become a foreign company. So this is a very, very difficult interpretation. So you need to get prior approval from the NBA for access of biological research for doing what? Not for trading, but for research, for commercial utilization, or biosurvey and biotilization. So this is where you need. So where does it get murky is when you are a foreign company, you use any plant material in India to do research, either for PVP research or for patent research or for any research, you need to get prior approval of NBA. And so if you're looking for an insect resistant plant, and if an insect comes onto your field, they can say, oh, sorry, you didn't take approval from me or you're looking for fungal uh, resistant plants and there's a fungus on your plant, you need to get approval. So there's a little difficult system, but uh, foreign companies, and you have to be very careful to look at your shareholding and so on. But if you're an Indian company, you do not need approval. You just need to do prior intimation for research, commercial utilization or biosurvey and biotilization. If you go for commercial utilization, you will have to pay a certain amount of um, 
benefit sharing to NBA. Uh, therefore, no approval is required for Indian actors, entities for access of BR, only prior intimation. Uh, section 4 is when you transfer research results. Section 6 is prior approval from NBA for patent work, but no approval required for plant variety protection under PPVFRA. And with this, I set the ball rolling for our session today. Thank you.